Derek, ring, ring. Hey, what's going on? Derek, what's going on, man? It's Bruce. How are you? Bruce, hey, doing good. How are you? I- I'm doing well, my friend. I'm doing well. Hey, I wanted to call and reach out to you today because, um, you know, I've been in- I've been learning some interesting things in this market right now. And um, I got to ask, I guess, do you have a couple seconds? Yeah, I-, I got some time. I got some time, about five minutes, if that's all right. Yeah, no, I, I-, I want this to be super, super quick. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day, a colleague of mine in the office, and what we realized is that the uh, the media, as well as just kind of just some unknown things are going on with our real estate market. And what I learned was, is not everyone's aware of what's going on around us. Um, and a lot of people are fearful to even have a conversation with us. And, and what's going on is we have an ever turning market. You see, we're selling so many different homes and it's very quick. And so to the media, it looks like we have a shortage of inventory. But to be honest with you, I see the exact opposite. And, and what I'm learning is that people going through any sort of lifestyle changes um, really are fearful around what to do and where to go. And so I'm reaching out to you today to see if you can help me out or if you can help out one of your friends or maybe a family member, or maybe somebody from church or work. You, you see people going through lifestyle change, such as like a marriage, a divorce, a, a divorce, a death, um, you know, gosh, maybe even a new kiddo maybe an empty nester, maybe a a new job. Do you know of anybody going through any of those six things? Well, first you're saying that your market's not really short on listings because that's what I see all over the place. You're more just saying that everything's turning and selling so fast that it instead appears that there's a shortage of inventory, right? Yeah, it appears that way. And and whenever you have something that appears a certain way, you can't help it. It's human nature to interpret it that way. But you see, the thing of it is, Derek, last year we sold more homes than we ever have in the history of our Denver market. So if we sold more homes than we ever have in the history of our Denver market, I got to ask people how, the, how that's an inventory shortage. Right, right. I understand that. And I think just because of the circumstances of what's currently going on in the world, I feel a lot of people are just more bunkered down than they ever have been before. I think that's probably why there's more or I guess there's less listings than there was before. I understand you were selling a lot of homes, but I think it's definitely going to be a lot harder, especially to get people in the homes to view them. Wouldn't you agree? Well, not necessarily, my friend. You see, when you say a lot harder to get people in the homes, I got to ask you how we're, if it's a lot harder, how are we able to sell more homes? Wow. Yeah, I never really thought about it like that. No, I totally agree. You're not wrong. It's just a different market. And that's, that's what, that's the hardest part about what we do is, is when we're in a different market, people think different and people think change. And when people think change and when people think different, um, it it sometimes comes with a negative connotation because people just don't like change. Uh, People don't know how to adapt to the change. And and so that's what I'm here to do today, Derek. I'm I'm looking for somebody that's making a lifestyle change because what we've realized is that the majority of things that are selling, the majority of people that are moving, it's because of one of those situations that they have going on in life. So do you know of anybody going through a death or divorce? I mean, that's a touchy situation. And who wants to think about moving during those times? Right. Well, uh, I guess for me, I've definitely been blessed. I haven't had anybody here in the last year or so pass away. Um, but I did have my auntie just uh, just had a baby last, last week or uh, I think a month ago. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, see, that's the thing, right? She might not be thinking about a move today, but as that baby starts to grow, is there going to be enough space for it? And all of those things. And, and the problem is not the problem there. It's just, it's just human nature. We have a life to live and we have a day to day to go through. Does she have time to really think about what that looks like if she does need a new place? You see, that's what I do. I help, I help alleviate that with people through a consultation. Um, yeah. yeah. I think for her, it's definitely just more, of a financial trouble just since that's what almost everyone's been going through this past while Uh, i know she's definitely going through a life change but in terms of trying to move or even sell her current home i don't think she'd be very very into that idea at least for a good while two three years maybe and that's and that's my friend that's all i'm that's all i'm trying to say is, is there's people that will not need to move or do anything because of a lifestyle change The key is, is that there are people out there that that do, and they're just afraid to kind of voice that. The the last thing I want to see people do is hunker down in a a place that just doesn't suit their needs, because they might have the opportunity to actually get something a little better, a little bit bigger, a little bit more for their needs for about the same amount of money that they're paying right now. 
uh, I, I got to be honest with you, Derek, especially, especially anybody who bought maybe three, four, five years ago, you know, you're at, you're at about that upper fours, 5% interest rate. Right now we're down to the low threes. And so what that can cause somebody to do is sell a house at X and actually buy another house that costs a little bit more and have the same monthly payment because their interest rates might be a, you know, a couple points below. Um, now, I'm not trying to talk anybody into selling. If, you're, if your auntie doesn't want to sell, don't worry about it. But clarity is power. And I, and I feel like people need to know their options. So if she's, if she's open to even looking at any sort of different options, let me know, my friend. I'm literally here to help people. And if I never hear back from you or her, not a big deal at all either. Yeah, I think I, I definitely would just have to talk to her first. I don't know how comfortable she is with uh, me giving out her information to, to someone that I personally know, um, especially when it comes to a realtor. Oh, my gosh. Did I ask for her information? I apologize. I don't need to overstep any bounds. Uh, it's not the fact that I feel that you, you know, would ask. It's just the fact that, you know, you're talking about helping her out. You're talking about trying to. Uh, not trying to sell her house per se. Um, and I guess you are really just trying to give her clarity at the end of the day, which is definitely a lot of power, like you said. Oh, and I'm not even looking to give her clarity. I'm, I, I'm actually calling you to give you clarity. You can have this conversation all day long with her. Um, I just want you to know that I'm a resource because it might not be your aunt. Next week, you could have a coworker that comes in and goes, holy crap, my wife's having triplets. You could have somebody that, that comes in next week, um, you know, to your church service and says, it's been a long time since I've been here and I've had something major come up in my life. You see, this just doesn't, just doesn't work for your auntie, man. This is something I want to do because I'm passionate about what I do. So if you think of anybody between now and the next time I give you a shot, my friend, please let me know. Uh, there's people out there that need to be helped and not everybody does. And that's, that's the beauty of what I do. And that's, that's what I realized. So I appreciate your time, Derek. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I have my, I'll, I guess I'll put my ears on a road say, see if there's anything that does pop up. Um, and if it does, I'll, I'll make sure you get a, get a word. All right, I appreciate that. That's all I can ask for, man. What are you doing this summer? Uh, this summer? Uh, whew. Yeah. I do, have, I do have some concerts planned now, now that those are starting go. to open up. But other than that, same old, same old. Heck yeah. What's the one you're looking most forward to? Um. It's this artist. I don't know if you heard of him, Kate Trinata. He's uh, coming out on May 1st. He's kind of like a, a house artist, but he does a lot more hip hop styles. Right on. Right on. How do you spell that? That's a good question. Uh, Type it in the chat. All right. That was a lifestyle script. I'm just going to end that recording. We're just going to ring, ring. Oh. Hello? Hey, Derek. Good morning. Hey, it's Bruce. Um, what's going on? Bruce. Um, sorry, um, I'm definitely running a blank. Do, do we know? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we did know each other. You're talking about, you're talking about a sphere of influence person that you don't know? Right. Well, I mean, they could know you. So, like, they could be someone that, you know, you went to high school with, you guys graduated. It could be someone, you know, you met freshman year, talked to three, four times, and then never talked to again. Sweet. Let's do that. I love this one. This is the epitome <laughs> of attack the elephant, right? When you're calling right. somebody you don't know or that you know, but maybe they don't know you, attack the unknown, attack the fear. Ring, ring, my favorite. Hello. Hey, is this Derek? Yeah, yeah, what's going on? Hey, Derek, this is Bruce. Hey, man, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm going to start off the rip with, it's been a long time since we chatted and I don't even expect you to remember me. Do you remember me from back in the, back in college we played some sand volleyball with those girls the, the, the one time? Oh God, that was quite a while ago, man. Um, years ago, years ago. Oh man. Yeah. You ate the dust that one time. That one play. Yeah, I, I'm starting to remember now. I, exactly. I think I got you. Exactly. Exactly. I don't know how we crossed paths or how we got phone numbers, my friend, but you see, I, I looked at your phone number and I thought, man, God, where do I know this guy from? And it, it dawned on me. And um, it, as long as it took me to figure it out, again, I, I can't even expect you to remember me. But the reason why I'm calling Derek is because I just, I just made a transition um, into real estate and, it, and it's provided me the time to reconnect with people. And I'm tasked. I'm tasked to reach out and make these uncomfortable phone calls to people that barely know me 
to, to just introduce myself again in your life because I've got an opportunity to reconnect with people that I've met throughout all of these years. So I appreciate you taking my call first and foremost. Wow, man, that's that's an amazing move. I've I've actually have a, a couple of family members that have also gotten into the real estate business pretty recently. So I'm I'm glad to see that it's actually an industry that people are still able to strive in. Yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, you got some family in real estate. That's so cool. I, I I'm I'm very intrigued by this this career. Um, it's it's been super interesting so far, and and honestly, that's kind of some of the reason why I'm calling today. Um, what I've learned so far is that the only people that really are looking to make a move and are really serious about it are going through some sort of lifestyle change. Do you know of anybody that's going through anything? Uh, maybe such as like a you know a new marriage or a new job. Well, man, I did just graduate. I think I was about two or three years behind you when we first met up at the volleyball court. Um, and I know a lot of the friends that were at that, that court the same day also just graduated. But, you know, all of us are renting now. So I don't know if any of them would have been, been looking for a new place to, to actually start calling home or, or put down that sort of commitment, you know, for the next 30 years. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean by that question to pigeonhole your thoughts. I'm talking about anybody in your world. You see, I don't care what age you are. You know people older, younger, um, you know, than you. I I'm looking for people maybe in, that you work with, maybe some church, um, not just the people we graduated with, definitely, because I've got all their numbers, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you should. You were very popular back then, man. Uh, but my, my manager, he actually, um, he actually got married to our our supervisor um they just had their honeymoon like last week i think they were both renting their own places but then i think she moved in with him and they're trying to get out of her lease right now um, gotcha. is that something that you'd be looking for or is that something that isn't really hitting the nail on the head yeah, I mean, there's no such thing as hitting the nail on the head. What it is, is there, because I, I like to take a consultative approach to this. You see, the reality is that just because somebody's going through a lifestyle change doesn't mean they're really looking to move. But the key is, is that when they talk to you, they're talking about their lifestyle change. But in the back of their mind, they might be thinking about the move, but why, why they, got, they don't need to bring up their personal stuff to you. So what I'm doing is I, I want to be a resource for anybody that has my phone. And, and that's why I give you a call today. When do you work next? Uh, my next shift is actually going to be uh, tomorrow. Today's my day off. Right on. Well, enjoy your day off. I'll get off the phone with you. Um, are you going to see your supervisor tomorrow? Yeah, he's, he's usually in there about five days a week. Right on. Well, hey, if you want to pop that question in just to see if he's, if he's looking for a real estate resource, just, just a consultation to see if it's something they want to do. There's no pressure in my eyes. I can't force somebody to buy the biggest purchase of their life. I also can't force anybody to sell the largest asset they have. All I can do is just help people answer some questions and provide some clarity. So if you're going to talk to him tomorrow afternoon, that'd be fantastic. Um, so I guess, you know, today's Thursday. Why don't I give you a call early part of next week to see if you guys had that conversation? If not, no sweat. All right. Yeah. Um, now, I do have a question. Now, if I got answers, if that's <laughs> something that you want me to do, why would I not just bring up my uncle who just got his real estate license? And my brother, who just got his real estate license as well. Yeah, I mean, you can. Do you feel like they're going to be the best approach for you and, and your friends? <clears throat> well, they are someone that I know a lot more than you, Bruce. I, I mean, the last time I saw you, you were eating sand, man. Yeah, no, I totally respect that. I totally respect that. So what you're saying is I don't have the opportunity to even interview with your supervisor? Not if you were the one. I, not if you're the one that I wanted to bring up. You feel me? No, yeah, I got you all day long. So what you're saying is, is if your uncle or your cousin, um, you know, tanks the relationship with your supervisor, um, how's work look? Well, I was, I was kind of thinking about getting out of there soon anyways. I don't know if it'd be too harsh on me. Right on, my friend. Well, hey, that's why I call because people need resources in their life. And it sounds like you got your resources on lockdown, man. I, I really appreciate that. I'm going to note that in my phone right now. If I, if I give you a call back, man, it's more just to see what's going on in your life. But yeah, send them over to your uncle. You got to do, you got to help people in your world that you feel most comfortable with. And you clearly feel most comfortable with your uncle. And that's, I can't take that away from you. Derek, I really appreciate this time. I hope you have a great day. Yeah. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah. You bet, man. Talk to you later. 
questions, comments, concerns? Great. Uh, <clears throat> when they bring up the uncle thing, um, there's a couple ways that I, I like to deal with that. Um, one is um, I would I would say something like, um, you know, I totally understand that, but sometimes, you know, different personalities fit for different people. And, uh, you know, your uncle might be a wonderful fit um, for one person that you may know, and I might be a better fit for somebody else. So all I ask is just that you keep me in mind. Bam. I like that better than me. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Um, it's like, yeah, you could go with your uncle, but I'm always going to be here as an option, just as another personality that might mesh well better with manager than what my uncle would be. Right. Uh, just so we have it on recording, the six lifestyle things that you can bring up. Death, divorce, marriage, kiddos, kiddos leaving, empty nester, and a new job. Cool. All right. Somebody's practicing this today. I, I got three people, you guys. Three people. Where's Sherry at? I, I saw her name come through. She got. Oh, a she's here. I see her. She's here. <laughs> <laughs> she got a possible lead from this script. There's two other people that got a possible lead. R Ricardo Garcia got one. Um, and who was the other one? Danielle? Mano? No. Anyways, three people in this last week. Um, it was got, me. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, I got two. You got two. Blow me away. All right. Um, use this thing. It's working for me. I barely have to lead generate and I'm getting leads. Use it. Abuse it. Sam's got it. Look at that scour. What's she scouring for today? What? You know, your eyes. You're like, mm, mm, scouring. You read an email, not paying attention? Oh, she's sharp. She's sharp. She's focused. <laughs> she's always sharp. Sam, you teaching your people these lifestyle scripts? Uh, no, but I Must should mean be. You don't, you don't know it. Let's go. You and Grady deliver the lifestyle script. I got to I got to use the boys. Room. Who's who? who? Yeah. Who's who? You be, you be the agent. No, nah, yeah, I think, Sam's I think Bruce was. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sam. The agent. <laughs> Okay, fine. Ring, ring. Wait, 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 huh? Who's who? I'm the agent. <clears throat> okay, wonderful. Hey, Grady. <laughs> hey. <laughs> How's it going? I'm doing well. How about you? That's awesome. I just was checking in with you. Um, just wanted to see how's everything going with the family. Oh, well. Not great, to be perfectly honest. Um, I've been sleeping on the couch for a week or so. Oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. What's going on? Uh, you know, I, she really liked the minivan that we had, uh, but, but I had to sell that thing. I um, mean, you know, I've been playing a lot of cards, and I uh, really needed a stake, <laughs> and, uh, and it just had to go. So, um, so the kids are walking to school now, and uh, I'm sleeping on the couch. Oh, man. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that. Is there anything I can do to help? I mean, do you want to call my wife? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Grady, you're killing me. Um, <laughs> um, are you getting No. You know, what's going on? Um, I don't know that I would want to get in between you and your wife, but honestly, I was just calling to see what's going on with you and your family. Um, you know, I'm in real estate and just checking to see if there's anyone from work, church or groups you're affiliated with um, that I could help or maybe even you and your family going through a hard time right now. Um, if y'all are looking to downsize, upsize or anything that's Anything that's going on that may affect a sale of your home. Well, if I don't start getting some luck pretty soon, then, uh, you know, I might be out on the streets, so I might be giving you a call. 
Okay. That's, a, that's, I mean, I'm sorry to hear that, but I would love to help you guys out of that situation. So that way you don't have to worry about um, selling your home. That would be the last thing I would want on your plate. Um, would it be okay if I followed up with you in a month or so? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, it's so great speaking with you. I'll talk to you soon. Was it, was it really um, great though? Was it really great? <laughs> you just so abs- absolutely killed me. Thank you for that. Um, I really couldn't stop laughing. I mean, I obviously wouldn't be laughing if that was actually real, but. No, very serious. Very, very serious. <laughs> Um, yeah, sorry. I, I still wanted to throw you a little bit of a curveball um, because that could have been either, you know, selling the house or a divorce there. Um, right. That definitely was, a, I'd say that was a change up. <laughs> Anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns? Plenty. I thought you did Do what? Job. You said plenty. He's got lots he's got of concerns words. on Grady's part. <laughs> lots of <laughs> words. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear that, Bruce? Yeah, I heard the whole thing. I was laughing my <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. All right, who's next? Hey, Chad. <clears throat> I think Bruce wants to break that down. I don't I don't think I can. That's oh, Jimmy's okay. job. All right. That's Jimmy's job. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, you guys, I, I, I like it. And I, and you know, the reality is you never know what to expect on that phone. You, you cannot go in expecting to deliver a script fluidly. It's just the idea. It's the, it's the, it's the, if the opportunity is there. What I like about what Sam did, she just, she attacked the help come from contribution. Anytime I get on the phone with somebody, if I'm going to ask them for business and they give me the reason not to, I'll take it because then I've got a reason to help them, right? The reason not to would be they're struggling. Something's going on in their life. The only reason to ask for business or deliver it is when somebody is doing all right. They're at work. They have five minutes. They took your call. They don't have, they're not upset by anything. They're excited for summer. Ask, the, ask for business. As soon as somebody's going through something, dog died, grandma died, divorce, death, you name it, job loss, help them. Don't, don't you ask somebody if they know somebody is looking to buy or sell if they just lost their job. You, wanna, you, wanna, you want the fastest. The only people you should ask are the people you don't want ever to ever answer your phone again. Don't, don't do that. Good job, Sam. Peace. See ya. Anybody? Danielle Mano, come on, you're using this script. I won't pick on Sherry too much. I've been using it on Facebook Messenger. I haven't really actually been using it to talk to people. Yeah, it's probably because you haven't been practicing it. Let's do it. Ariana, you and Danielle. Oh, geez. I'm on. Okay. <laughs> Am I the agent? Of course, if you're practicing the script, you're always the agent. All right. Ring, ring. Hello. Hi, Ariana. How are you? Good. And you? I'm doing well. I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself. This is Danielle with Keller Williams. Oh, hey, Danielle. Hey, so we haven't spoken in a while. Um, do you remember that we met at the barbecue last summer? I believe so. Yeah, around June. Yeah, July. yeah. That was a great time. Hey, you know, I want to just give you a quick call. Do you have a couple of minutes? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Hey, you know, I just tra- I just transitioned into real estate, and I'm calling around to people who I love, trust, love and trust, and I just wanted to. Oh gosh, it's okay. See if hey. they're. It's, a, it's okay. Start over. Breathe. Don't get yourself into a bad, bad habit. It's okay. So nervous. <laughs> yep. I get like it. Sure. I get it. <sighs> okay. Do you, do you want to roll with me? Sure. Okay. 
Hey, this is Bruce. Hey, Bruce. This is Danielle with Keller Williams. How are you doing today? Danielle, I'm doing well. Yourself? I'm doing Wait, great. Wait, Danielle with great. Keller Williams, the, the Danielle we met at the barbecue last year? Yeah, yeah. Oh, heck yeah. What's going on? Oh, nothing. Just calling out calling everyone that i know love and trust and seeing how they're doing nice yeah well think things are well with me what's going on in your world oh my gosh no no seriously it's a conversation just like you would have with your best friend without being in real estate right mm -hmm. what is going on in danielle's world like legitimately anything positive going on in you and your family's life like getting excited for the warm weather. Oh, everything's going good with us. We're getting ready to have my son's second birthday, and we're excited for the warm weather, and we can all play outside. Heck yeah. When does he turn two? In two weeks. In two weeks? I bet you're an excited mom. Oh, yeah. I'm ready for those terrible twos. <laughs> right on. Well, hey, um, I, I don't. I hate. I hate that I answer the phone and then I got a precurse with. I got. A, I got a couple minutes and I, I probably got to get back to work here. Oh, okay, great. I don't mean to take up much of your time. I was just calling to see if I could help anyone out with maybe a lifestyle change that they've got going. Maybe a new baby, just got married, a new job. Um, if they're downsizing or unfortunately a loved one passed away or a divorce. Oh, um, I thought you were in real estate. What, what's going on? Oh, well, real estate is an ever-changing market. And, you know, the media likes to portray that we have a low inventory, which in all reality, we don't. And um, I just am reaching out to see if there's anyone that I can help. Some people are scared to move right now because they think that the inventory is low and they don't know where they're going to be going. I'm you by chance. I'll stop you. I'll stop you there. Um, the only thing I feel we're missing right now is the connection between how you can help somebody through a lifestyle change. You went right into talking about the market. Talk about, well, somebody going through a lifestyle change very well may be looking for answers to something about, you know, their real estate needs. Um, somebody may be looking to ask questions about what it takes to buy a home in this market because they have a growing family. Connect the dots with the lifestyle. You're, you're right there. This is really good, Danielle, for you being as nervous as you said you were. Um, dang. Um, people that nervous, you recovered. Uh, but here's the key with what we do. When you get nervous, don't ask for the business. The, key, the, the first part of everything that we do is just getting comfortable with being mm -hmm. uncomfortable. The first part of uncomfortable is picking up this 2,000 pound cell phone we have, putting it up to our ear and pressing call. So you did that. And so if you ever get into a situation that you are nervous, then tailor that conversation to not ask. Talk about life, talk about kids. And then if they say, hey, is there any reason why you gave me a call today? Say, you know, to be honest with you, there, there is, but I, I'm actually a little nervous to ask. So I'm, I'm, it's okay that it, it's okay. I just wanted to talk about your family today. And they might say, wait, why are you nervous? You shouldn't be nervous around me. Well, I, I'm calling because people are going through lifestyle changes and yada, yada, yada. I promise you, if you try to not talk about real estate, mm -hmm. it'd be a lot more natural. Yeah. And then when somebody says, well, wait, why did you call? Let them know that it would, you nerves got to you and you weren't going to ask what you wanted to ask. And then they're going to be curious. And curiosity kills that cat every time. You, you know, and the other thing, when you have, you know that you're probably going to get into that situation where they might not know you well, I always try to let them know ahead of time so that they don't ask that question. It's like, hey, Bruce, this is Harry with Keller Williams. How are you doing? Bruce says, good. And I say, hey, you know what? I was thinking about the barbecue we were at last year, and I thought I'd give you a call. Right. So now Bruce isn't going to be embarrassed enough to go, oh, I don't remember you at that. He's going to go, oh, yeah, yeah, usually. Mm -hmm. And then you can get into, you know, I was thinking about spring and it's a time for everybody that wants to go out and, and look for homes and do those kind of things. And so I'm just reaching out to everybody today and then you can go down that road. Bingo. And, and Grady brought up the best. 
as soon as you start asking somebody what's going on in their life and what what they're doing mm-hmm. it's it's just it's societal norm to counter back with so what's going on in your life danielle yep. and if you're nervous Always. as ever you have that opportunity to bring up real estate and i would say that if you're very nervous that you should really try to get past that nerve right there and, and go into real estate. If you're super nervous and you want to just hang up the phone right then and there, and it's that bad inside of you, then talk about what you're doing this summer. But I promise you, the more that you just make sure you keep a relation. I know that the, uh, the more you keep the relational piece going, the much more likely you are to calm yourself down. Awesome. You got this. Thank you that so was- much. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. It takes a lot of tenacity to volunteer on this thing. I'm not joking you. When I first went into a, you guys aren't even in person. Wait till you guys see what I had. I mean, I, when we were in person, I had to walk into a room full of agents that had been doing this way longer than me, sounding like complete rock stars. And- I, I, walked right- I panicked. Bold, yeah. I panicked. Oh, <clears throat> I was like, okay, Harry, why don't you stand up? And I'm thinking, <laughs> Me? You want me to stand up? <laughs> oh, the first time I ever stood Come up on. and bold. Oh, God, I did not feel bold. Oh, oh I felt like going to the bathroom. <laughs> it was awful. It was awful. Um, yeah, I jumped into scripts. It was person to person. And these people are just going. And I, they get to me. And I'm like, they're like, go. And I was like. And the coach is standing right here. And I'm like, come on, yep. dude. You don't have to yep. stand right there. I'm going to blow it. Just read what's on the paper, Bruce. Just read. Uh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't even see these words. So good job, Danielle. It takes. Thank you. I really needed that. Thank you. I, everybody does. That's why Sherry doesn't even put her video. I on thought anymore. you did good. She needs it. She's and every time gets video. easier. By the way, Danielle. Every time you do it now, it's going to get easier and easier. Yep. Awesome. I felt like I was too chatty. Like, oh. like just run on running. No, you, you, you. That's the beauty is. When you're going through this evolution called getting comfortable being uncomfortable, Uh who cares what you are too much of? The reality is is you have the tenacity to pick up the 2,000 pound phone. That's it. That's all you're trying to accomplish when you first start getting over the picking up the phone. That's it. Once you can get through that. I mean, you guys understand my progression. I've told you multiple times that there are some new people in here. I I got to a point where I just cower. I, I couldn't formulate words. And so my coach said, Quit asking about real estate. Just talk to them like you need something from them. Talk to them like, like you're having a barbecue. Talk to them like you want to make plans with them over the summer. Just go start doing that. And then Grady hit the nail on the head. As soon as you just start talking to somebody as a friend and you start to ask them what they're doing or how their life's going because you naturally care, they'll ask you. And slowly or fast, you can start to bring in real estate. Um, there are people you would just always feel comfortable with asking about real estate. You might not feel comfortable with the words coming out of your mouth, but if your mom asks you what you're doing, you're going to probably start talking about real estate. Hey, Danielle, what have, you been do- what have you been doing this summer? You tell me right now, just with between Bruce, or me and you, you'd say, well, I got into real estate, right? You'd say, it was crazy. I did this. I did that. That's all you got to do. Oh, okay. That's simple. I shouldn't say it's that simple. <laughs> uh, it, it's, a, it's a progression. It's a yeah, progression. It really I'm, I'm, everything we do in real estate is mental, right? And I like to compare it to the physical piece of things, all right? So if, if I were to go tell you, all right, well, and maybe some of you guys are runners in here, but I'm not a runner. I, can't, I don't really like running. Harry Davis will run all day long. I don't. And so if somebody said, hey, Bruce, you got a marathon, you got a marathon race coming up in two weeks. How many, how many, how many miles of marathon? What's the 26 miles? 26.2. That's what I'm talking about. Um, you've got a marathon coming up in two weeks. You need to start training today. Do I go out and run 26 miles the first day? Mm-mm. Yeah. Because what's that going to do to me? It's going to make me absolutely not want to do it the next day and the next day. But if I go out and ran five today, maybe seven tomorrow, maybe 10 the next day, that's, that's how you, you phase this into progression, right? Scripts, consultations, 
everything we do in real estate is the exact same way when we've never done it or we're not accustomed to it. So the first progression, instead of five miles the first day, think, I just need to start picking up the phone. Then the second day, when you do seven miles, that's I need to pick up the phone and I need to say hello and ask people what they're doing for summer. Then the next day, when you're running 10 miles, I need to pick up the phone. And now when somebody asks me what I'm doing, I'm going to try and pop in real estate. And then the next day, see, it's that phase. But here's the key. If we're not doing phase one, two, and three, and we get overwhelmed with ourselves for not picking up the phone, then we feel like the day that we do end up calling, we got to run 26 miles. And if you run 26 miles that first day, you ain't getting back on the phone the next day. You're in bed, you're sore, lactic acid is just coursing through your veins. It's the same thing mentally. This guy up here is a creature. It's a muscle. It's, it's, it's the most powerful thing we have. It, in my world, this is more powerful than water. You know why it's more powerful than water? Because I can think about where water is going. I can think about what water is going to do in a certain situation. This is the most powerful thing that we have. So relate it to different things that you've had to go through in life. My daughter doesn't go and ride a bike day one. She gets training wheels. She wants dad to be beside her. She wants dad to push her. We go through phases of progression. She can't go and ride a bike until she's willing to take action through each phase. Like filling out a contract. That first contract, when you look at it, you go, oh my God. It's you just... And then all of a sudden you do one, then you do another, then you do another. And pretty soon boom, you're just whipping out contracts. Same, same principle, different process. Mm -hmm. I've yeah, got yeah. an idea for a phase 0.5 really quick. This used to help me out getting on the phones. I used to can, call. Wait, can you, what would you say? I'm really sorry. A phase 0.5? What is it? Like, like you said, going from phase one to two, like I've got a, I've got a, just a way to, you know, pick up the phone. And oh, a half a phase, silly. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of silly, but sometimes I would call like my grandma or my mom or like a really good friend and I would just mm -hmm. say, hey, um, I'm kind of getting my ass beat on these real estate calls and I just wanted to call you and say, hey, you know, how's it going? You know, and just sometimes there's people in our world that we haven't reached out to in a while that are going to be easy to talk to. So sometimes when you get in this mood where you're like, gosh, I just have so much anxiety around calling somebody.